Have you ever wondered how solar works? Well, in this video, we're going to discuss what it takes to make the sun's energy produce AC voltage for your home. If this is your first time watching us, please click subscribe down below here on the bottom right. And uh, if you do click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. The United States has spent a crazy amount of money on the current infrastructure. And that infrastructure supports mining, drilling, transporting, refining, and distributing fossil fuels. At the same time, the demand for energy has gone up steadily with the population. Solar, wind, hydroelectric, and other renewables are really starting to make a dent in the infrastructure though. I think there is definitely hope for renewables in the future as a primary source of energy. It's hard to believe that the earth absorbs over 173,000 terawatts in a day. That's 10,000 times more sun than we even need. It's agreed that 20 days of sunshine is all the earth needs to produce more energy than the fossil fuels ever did on this planet combined. Transforming light from the sun directly into electricity without any moving parts is science. It's free. And when it's not, we won't care, right? So how do we harness that potential energy and power our homes with it? It's a process as predictable as the sun rising and setting every day. And there are no moving parts during the whole process. This makes solar technology so desirable because the technology will last for decades at a time. So how do we take photons from the sun and get them to push electrons on the solar panel in a manner that'll create enough electricity to power our homes? It all starts with the PV cell. A single PV cell is the smallest component capable of this process. Silicon, being the second most abundant element on this earth, is perfect for this. So the silicon is then sandwiched between two layers of conductive material. An atom within the silicon connects to other atoms by four strong bonds. And this keeps the electrons stationary so no current can flow. A silicon PV cell is a semiconductor with two main layers, a positive and a negative. The positive side is doped with boron to give it a positive charge or extra electrons. And the negative side is doped with phosphorus to give it a negative charge. The junction where the positive and negative layer come together is called the PN junction. And an electric field is created there. It generates about a half a volt DC to travel through the cell from the P layer to the N layer, but not in the other direction. The connection between the P layer of one cell and the N layer of an adjacent cell increases the overall voltage, which is then added in series. Sunlight has particles of light shooting out from it, and they're called photons. And when those photons hit the solar panel hard enough, it knocks an electron free from its bond, leaving a hole. And the negative electron and location of the positive charged hole freely move around now. Since there's an electric field at the PN junction, the electrons will only go one way. The electron gets pulled over to the N side while the hole gets pulled over to the P side. From there, this process repeats itself over and over and does work like powering the house until all those electrons return back around to a conductive aluminum sheet on the back side of the panel. Because the voltage of an individual crystalline PV cell is only a half a volt DC, a PV module consists of numerous cells wired together in series. So when 36 cells are wired in series, you should expect to get 18 volts DC. Unlike voltage, the current of the cell is dependent on the surface area. So the larger the panel, the more voltage it can produce. And the current of each cell will pretty much stay the same as the current of each module. The panels of yesterday were 18 and 36 cell panels. In 2019, our panels are 60 cell and at the very least go to 72 and 96 cell panels for the residential market. More cells means more power per panel. Monocrystalline and polycrystalline panels are your choices for your solar panels. Monocrystalline panels are the most desirable panels right now because of their efficiency and the, just the way they look. I mean, they're, they're typically black panels with black frames and they have a black back sheet and they're all made with one single type of crystal. That single crystalline material used on mono panels makes them more efficient than polycrystalline panels. And they're more efficient because they allow the electrons to move more freely. The reason why they're a tad bit more efficient than polycrystalline panels is in the casting process of the cells. Polycrystalline panels are made with a variety of crystals. So when the molten silicon of multiple types of crystals gets poured into a mold and solidifies, it dries flat into what looks like a bed of flakes or crystals. Polycrystalline panels also have like a bluish tinge to them too. The different crystals within the cell create grainy little speed bumps that can make it more difficult for the electrons to navigate out of the cell. Monocrystalline panels are smoother at that level and that's the reason monocrystallines are all the rage right now. 
Well, hopefully this has helped you gain a little bit of understanding about the process of solar energy production. If you are interested in having Fox Family come out to give you a quote on your solar project, just give us a call or you can text us too at 916-877-1577. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here to the bottom right. And uh, if you do click that little bell right next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air Conditioning. Don't forget to subscribe and check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.